a play for us this morning. You see the name up on the screen, Star of Wonder, a kid's Christmas musical of hope. And uh, I'm so excited. These kids have been working hard today. And, you know, it's a special play uh, this year. Uh, we're going to dedicate it to the aunt of one of the members of the cast. Maybe you can put her picture up there. We're going to dedicate it in memory of Melody.
God said was to do everything. You all just got stars in your eyes. Now let's just settle down. From the start of all creation, when God said it's in the sky, we have seen a million stories happen right before our eyes. We saw Abraham and Isaac watch Noah build an ark. When Joseph started dreaming, we were watching from the dark. We got
That's the glory of God. Something big is happening. Wow! I'm so glad we're here for this. Let's listen in. There's an angel down there talking to a group of shepherds. He says, Don't be afraid. I bring good news. Unto us is born this day in the city of David, the Savior who is Christ the Lord. You'll find him wrapped in swollen clothes and lying in a manger.
those wee little legs. <laughs> It'll take them two years to get there. We've got to move on. Let's rock and roll, guys! We're here! We're here!
lives, but you know what? You did it for a reason today. You were up here for a reason. And the reason is, and I, there was a line that you had that I really liked before where you said, it's great to be a star and all of you are stars, but there's one who's the real superstar. Our Lord Jesus, and you pointed to the cross. So we give praise and thanks. You are here today to give thanks to Jesus for what He did for you and what He did for us at Christmas that He came to this world for us. So of all the people, and I say this every year, of all these people that are here today who are thankful to you for the job you did, there's one who is more thankful and happy than all the rest, and it's Jesus. He's here right now. Thank you for what you did. I know you guys worked really hard on this play, been working a really long time, and it paid off because it came off great today. So thank you. I want to thank some other people who have been working hard on this. Maybe you have your programs you saw. Behind the scenes people, thank you to those of you uh, with our PowerPoint. Thank you to Karen Frias for the work that she did. <laughs>
You know, today that's the thing. Man, did you notice even, you say, what's that stuff on the walls? Look over on the walls. We have our constellations all around you of the star. There's a sense in which all the stars give praise to the creator of the stars, who was Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, God, the Trinity made the stars. So there's a sense today in which is very appropriate that we have kids dressed up like stars to give praise to the Savior, Jesus, who was really there at the very beginning of this world to create the heavens and the earth. And the earth, I think, is there to give a witness, a testimony. There is a creator. When you go out at night, look up and say, there is a God. There is a, my Savior made this world. And it's a gift to all of us. So there's a sense in which the stars in general are, are a beautiful way to think about Christmas, the coming of Jesus, our Savior, and the creator of the world. But as most of you know, in the Christmas story, the original real true Christmas story, that part of the story centers around a star. And it gets referred to as the Star of Bethlehem. And that's why I want to read this passage with you, because it talks about that part of the Christmas story and the star that was part of that story. So follow along. We're going to start here, Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And we're just going to read a couple of verses here, verses 1 and 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, now that word Magi, that's what we refer to as the wise men. Okay, you saw the wise men dancing up here. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. Now things, we think maybe they came from where Iran is today. That back then there it was Persian. And they asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship. Now this morning I want to talk about that star that they were talking about in this passage, the star of Bethlehem. And I want to first of all, and this is my first point this morning, talk about the star of Bethlehem and Jesus. Because as I said, it is, I believe, part of the story. It is also a picture of Jesus. When they saw that star going through the sky, leading them to Bethlehem, it was not just a pointer. It was a picture of Jesus coming into the world. Why do I say that? Well, if you go to the end of the Bible, the last book of the Bible, called Revelation, there was a man who was a close follower of Jesus named John. And he had a vision. That's where he wrote down that book. And in the beginning of the vision, he sees Jesus, and Jesus talks to him. At the end of the vision, he sees Jesus again, and Jesus talks to him. I want to show you the last words of that vision where Jesus said, speaks to this man John in Revelation 22, verse 16. Here's what Jesus said. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Now, what did Jesus mean when he said those last words? I am the bright morning star. It's not a literal idea that Jesus was a star, but he was using a star in the heavens that gets, got referred to back then and even today as the morning star, as a picture of himself. It's possible, we don't know for sure, this was actually the star that led the wise men to Jerusalem. And it's interesting because... It's actually not a star. I don't know how much you know about the morning star as they refer to it, but it's actually a planet. 
looks like a star, and it's called the morning star because it's the first one that comes out when it gets dark at night, and it's the last one to stay shining when it's ready to become dawn. So it's that morning star, just before morning, you still see that one star shining. And it's believed that it's one of the planets, I, I believe it's Venus, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> And this is where some people think that when the wise men saw what they called a star, it was actually not a star, but it was a planet. Because the difference, a little astronomy lesson here, the difference between stars and planets is that stars are stationary, but planets move. Did you know that? At night, if you see at a certain, you know, celestial being up there moving, and you see it here at this point of night, and there at that point, then it's, then it's likely a planet, because they are moving where the stars will stay stationary. The bright morning star, it's possible, very likely, was a planet, is a planet that Jesus is referring to. Now, why did Jesus choose that one? Because it's the first one when it starts to get dark. It's the last one before the darkness leaves. At the beginning of the reign of darkness, Jesus was there. The darkness in the Bible represents the reign of Satan that came into this world that brought pain and suffering and evil and sin and guilt and shame and brokenness. And we've been living under this rain. We have to live in this darkness every day of our lives. Who here comes today and says, well, I have no pain in my life. I have no problems in my life, right? Well, we're all fighting this darkness. And so Jesus says, I want you to know in the midst of the darkness, I am the bright morning star. I'm there from the beginning that it came into this world, and I'm going to be there till it's gone. Because when it's gone, I'm going to shine like another star, the sun, and bring light to heaven where a new day is going to come when I return to this world. So that night, when there was a star and it was moving, it was a picture of Jesus. He was there that night. He was there guiding those wise men. He was there even before he was born in the manger. And he's there in your life, in my life too. It's interesting, you know, these wise men came and they said, where's this star we read about? Where's this king we read about? Now, how did these guys from Persia know that this king was going to be born in Israel? Well, it's likely they were very learned men. They had likely maybe studied some Jewish Old Testament. That's the first part of our Bible, scriptures. Maybe some Jewish scholars had gone to their nation, and they talked and shared the Old Testament with them. And they read a prophecy. A prophecy, what I mean by that, there's a prediction of a coming king. Now, this is an interesting story. Many, many years ago, this is part of the Old Testament part of the Bible, the Jewish people were moving to their, their homeland, Israel. They were going through a, a wasteland, a desert, a wilderness. And this king, who saw them moving through his land, was angry and he wanted to destroy the people of God. So he hired this like witch doctor. True story. It's recorded in the Bible. And this witch doctor guy went up on this mountain and he was going to put a curse. He got money to do this, to put a curse on the people of Israel. Because nobody could stop these people. They just kept rolling through to this promised land. And so he got up there and he was ready to put the curse on them. And as much as he tried to curse them, only blessings came out of his mouth. And so he got up there, and, and I want to show you, we'll put it on the screen, Numbers chapter 24. He's about to curse him, and here's what he says. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. 
A star will come out of Jacob. Jacob was the name for the Jewish people. A scepter, that was a, one of the things the kings would hold up to show that they were in power. This like stick that they would hold up to show. A scepter will rise out of Israel. You know what that guy, that, that witch doctor was talking about? Christmas! The coming of Jesus! It's amazing that when that star was there guiding the wise men, God had predicted that Jesus was coming and that God would use a star to, to point the way, to give a marker, to show Jesus coming into the world. And I want you to get this imagery for your life today. Because in all of our lives we need some light. Some hope. Some guidance. You know, I don't know if you've had this. I have this. Sometimes you wake up at night and it's dark. And boy, things look grim. And the, and the night gets long. And, and it's amazing how when the sun comes up, things can look so much better. There's something that light lifts our spirits. You know, I think that picture is, is part of something we experience. And it's not just, oh, it's daytime, everything's better now. Here's the point of the Bible. The light is Jesus, who, who died for your sins. When he came to this world, he became one of us. He became our substitute. He paid for all our sins on that cross. And he rose again to give you hell and hope and light. So you know what? Even in the dark of night, he's shining. He's there to help you. Yes. Some of you feel like you're in the dark of night in your life right now. There is a Savior named Jesus. Yes. And He loves you. And He's there to shine. Open your hearts to Him. Let Him shine into your life tonight, today. I think I'm in night time still. <laughs> Let Him shine into your hearts. Give him a chance. Seek him. Pray to him. Put your faith in him, not yourself, not your dollars. Put your faith in him, Jesus, the bright and morning star. From the beginning to the end of your life, from the beginning to the end of this world, from the beginning of a nighttime that's rough to the end, he's going to be there for you. Here's the other thing, and that's where I want to talk about this, this uh, star of Bethlehem and, and us. The Bible uses the picture of stars for us. Did you know that? Just like it used it as a picture of the star, as a picture of Jesus, it says that you and I should be like stars. Philippians <coughs> chapter 2. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. So that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. For then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Here's what the Bible says. If you love Jesus and you believe in him and you receive his love and he shines in your life, then you need to start to shine for him. How do you do that? Well, there's some real simple things. Look at verse 14. Stop grumbling Amen. and arguing. Amen. It's Christmas. Yes. Let's shine. If, if everybody else in the family wants to be grumps, you shine. Amen. Make, make it a mission for at least a week.
You know, there's a lot of work in the next year in this church needs to do for the Lord. And I'm going to shine for the Lord in whatever calling He has in my life. What is the Lord calling me to You know, that's why I love having the kids up here. They, they set the example. They're up here shining for Jesus. These kids put a lot of time and effort into this to shine for Jesus. How about you? You never be too old to shine for the Lord. What are we going to do? What are you going to do to be a difference maker? In this world, to be different from what you see around you. What are you going to do to shine for Jesus? Let's pray. Lord, right now, we just want to thank you, Jesus. You are the one who's shown into our hearts. Not only into this world, but into our hearts. While our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I just want to ask this morning. Are there some of you who have never asked Jesus into your heart and your life? Would you like Jesus to come into your life? Here's what we're going to do. While our heads are, in our eye, are bowed, our eyes are closed, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand so God can see. And say, I, in your heart, you just say, I want Jesus in my life. If you want to do that right now, raise your hand. Keep it up. And I'd like you to say this prayer in your heart. Jesus, come into my life. I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for me. Forgive me. I want to follow you. You put your hands down. Lord, you saw each and every one of those hands. You know each and every heart. You know the darkness that we battle. Help us, Lord Jesus. Be our Savior. Shine with hope and healing. With joy and comfort. Shine, Lord. Push out the darkness. Push out the sin out of our lives. So that we could be shining stars for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Laugh that we want to encourage you to shine for the Lord here at this church. And uh, so here's what I want to do. Again, I'm going to ask our ushers if they would grab some of the pencils right now. And uh, maybe a few bulletins. They're going to make their way up to the front. If you have a bulletin... Would you take it out right now? And if you need a bulletin or you need something to write with, grab something to write with. And uh, they're going to come down the row. So if you don't have something to write with or you don't have a bulletin, just go ahead and raise your hand and they'll come by and get the bulletin or something to write with for you. I'd like you to tear off the perforated third column. We call it our connection card, our tear-off sheet, so go ahead and tear that up like that. On the light-colored side, you can put down whatever information you've come from giving us. We want to get to know you, especially if you're a guest today. Mark off in that box, whether you're a first or second time guest, and just give you a chance to get to know you. Maybe you've got some updated info if you are a regular attender. On the dark-colored side, chances to shine for Jesus. That's how I want you to look at this today. Chances to shine for Jesus. So you're going to hear some announcements on the screen. We want you to think about where can I get involved. These kids got involved. How about you? So I want you to think about that. And uh, mark that off. Here's one other thing I want you to think about. You see this beautiful booklet that's in your bulletin? Here's your New Year's resolution. I'm going to go to a small group in 2014. I, I made the resolution for you. <laughs> so now you just look at the menu and find out what fits and works for you. All right, when you're watching the screen, we want to show you some of the exciting things that are happening in the life of the church and why you do. Mark off the TRF sheet where you want to get involved.
Good morning and Merry Christmas. Hey, there's some exciting things happening here in the life of uh, Oasis. And beginning in January, we want you to know that we've got some new small groups getting started. So you get your copy already this week. Look through it. Find a group that's special just for you and start to attend it. Also, you might notice in that directory, we've got a lot of groups doing discipleship assemblies. This is a study that is, uh, is rooted and fundamental to what we believe is Christian. If you're not in one of those groups, you might want to take this course now. If you do, contact me okay, as soon as you possibly can. And I want to remind you, if you're not in a small group, look for one and get one. It'll change your life. So remember, check that directory, look it over, so that when the first of January comes around, you'll know what group you're in. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Good morning, Oasis. I just want to remind you all that tonight at 6 p.m., we're going to be having our Oasis Christmas Choir. They're going to be performing wonderful joy. I hope you all can make it. Also, we're going to be having our candlelight service on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. Every year we do this, so we ask that you come out and fellowship with us and worship with us on that day. Also, we're going to be having our Gems Temple Talent Night on January 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's our Gems' biggest fundraiser, so we ask that you come out and support them. It's $5 per adult and $2.50 per child tenancy. Lastly, we're going to be having our marriage retreat, but before we have that, we need someone to help coordinate this. So if you're interested in helping coordinate it, please sign the chair option. Thank you, and have a blessed day. So as I said, we'd like you to fill out our connection card, check out whatever else is in the bulletin, maybe that didn't get mentioned up on the screen. The baskets will come by in a minute and put this in the basket with your tithe and your offering. Uh, as your pastor, I want to say a special thank you to those of you who have been given faithfully, especially tithing, giving that first 10% to the Lord. Thank you to those of you who have been doing that. Maybe God's touching your heart, and that's your New Year's resolution, too, to tithe and give back. And the Lord has been so good to you. You know, we have different ways to do it. You can put the check or the cash in the basket. Um, you could take the envelope out and send it in this week. You could stop by the kiosk on your way out today. You could uh, download that Secure Give. That's the name of it, Secure Give app. and give on your phone. Or go to our website. It's on the back of your bulletin. There's a place for you to give at the website, too. Um, I want to say a prayer, and then we're going to have a time of 